yes, perfect. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. So where are you? Where are you? Um, you know, uh, doing this from? So this is from London. Uh, so we're oh. a um, we're the first Asian and the first and the oldest Asian radio station uh, in the UK. Um, <laughs> so we've been going strong for about what thirty five odd years now. Um, and wow, I've been, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, really nice. So we play like all the Hindi songs, all the Bollywood news um, and things. <laughs> when I'm in London, I know what, what to tune to. Absolutely. And in fact, you must come to the studio um, when when you are here in London. This is fun, definitely. We'd love to have you here. But um, thank you for taking the time out and speaking to us. Uh, it's an absolute honour. Uh, it really, really is. So firstly, congratulations. You know, you did amazing in the contest for reaching so far. You've made us all really, really proud. But, you know, like you said, you've just come back. And I think, and I'm guessing you must have gone straight into interviews and media interactions um, visually and virtually. But tell me how you're feeling now that you've had a few days uh, to, to recover. Oh, uh, well... I've not had the, uh, any days to recover. I'm still with my bag still unpacked. <laughs> but I, I really like that because um, I remember when everything was done because you're preparing for three years and suddenly it's over one night, you know, and then you're stuck and you're like, wow, was this everything? And that was the feeling that I had. But when I came down and when I spoke to my parents and everybody around, they, they were so, uh, they, they were overwhelmed by the kind of response and people really reaching out. I think our country really wanted something like this. Of course. You know, and uh, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, no, no, that's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, uh, uh, they welcomed me with the sweetest and the kindest gestures and I cannot be more thankful. I think they've done much more for me than I could ever do for them. Absolutely. And of course, you know, India is going through a really, really tough time at the moment. Um, so I think you've brought that angle of happiness and positivity uh, back into the country. So I think, you know, everyone is really, really grateful for you. But um, I believe um, you, in fact, uh, at one point tested positive for COVID as well. So uh, just tell me like how you got through all of it and, you know, your emotions. Um. I even get goosebumps every time that I think about that situation because there was a lockdown and we couldn't get a lot of things done and I tested positive. So that meant that I couldn't meet my team members for the next two months and sorry, two weeks, <laughs> two, two weeks. Months. And, and uh, at that time, you know, I, I realized isolation, the kind of isolation that COVID patients go through is so difficult. Mm. Um, I learned how difficult it is and you know for the, I couldn't even stand that I was really it was emotionally very painful for me to go through that uh, time and even prepare because I had a lot to still prepare so I was preparing trying to build myself emotionally but that time was really that brought in a lot of humility mm -hmm. and humanness into my preparation you know because sometimes when you're preparing for a beauty contest what really happens is that you it tends to become all about you suddenly yeah you know it's about your hair and your makeup and your styling and your gown and what you're going to wear and what you're going to say that you know the essence of why you're there gets lost so yeah. i think it was god's way to remind me my essence and my uh my place there at the pageant it had a lot of meaning and it brought a lot of meaning up for me to even like push through despite all the problems mm -hmm. i think that was you know that was that turning point and to think about my people that I should be doing this for them. This is the least that I can do um, compared to what's happening in my country. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, now, let's take you back to, you know, the initial days of your training. And, and, and actually, the question is, um, I think first and foremost, is did, was this always your dream? Did you always want to enter uh, this beauty pageant and then, you know, go on uh, to be Miss India, Miss Universe? Uh, not at all. <laughs> I, I never even imagined myself in this space because I felt um, very honestly that I'm not good enough. I was made to feel uh, that, you know, it's maybe my skin. I had a lot of marks on my body and um, I couldn't speak well because I had a lisp. Mm. 
Mm. Uh, so I would always, um, you know, stop when I'm speaking because it was so hard to pronounce a lot of words for me. Um, but life took such a different turn when I decided that this is what I want to do and I wanted to really represent myself there. And um, girls who really don't feel like they're in the right place, um, I wanted to do that for them and for myself, especially for myself. And things changed and because I had such an amazing friend as a roommate uh, who kept pushing me even through the odds and trying to, you know, she kept, she believed in me more than I could believe in myself. So she kept pushing me ahead and gave, gave me this chance of, you know, just being there as a support system in Bombay when I had absolutely no one. I came here when I was 15 with no idea what I was going to do, where I was going to stay. I remember spending one night, um, you know, on the on the sides of Marine Drive because uh, I had no house to go to. I was very young and I couldn't find a place for myself. I did a terrible job finding a place for myself. Um, so from there, from having absolutely no one to today having so many people just there to support and to send a lot of love and care, it means a lot. And oh, it, it just do. shows. And I, I, I wish every other girl that you know looks at this and sees this video just believes in the strength of her dreams because you know it I've seen miracles yeah. so I don't doubt that there are more to come in my life and I'm just going to be humble and um, be open to accepting them of course wow I mean that's unbelievable like you had no home um, and you know spending a night like that on marine drive and I mean and now look at you where you are that is that is a, a story and that is like history uh, that has been made. So, you know, we, we see all the hard work and, and hard work pays off, as they say. And I think you're, you're, you're a great example uh, of that, um, which is so lovely. But uh, tell me about that moment um, where you won the Miss Diva, um, that crowning moment. How was that for you? Um. That was, you know, because when I went on the Miss Diva stage, my objective was to represent my grandmother and to, you know, talk about her stories and talk about the female farmers of India. So I'd done my job. So I, I am this person. I give my 100% and I accept what is given to me. Mm -hmm. I don't question it. I don't regret anything. I just move ahead because I've, I, I know the importance of an opportunity. So I don't complain. I just move ahead. And that's what happened in Diva. And at that moment, I thought all my problems, all my struggles are over. And now I get to do what I really want to do. So I get crowned. And a month later, we get into a lockdown. Oh, God. <laughs> no, but I think that's how life teaches you, no? Yeah. Because um, I was like, you know, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I need to, I want to do this. And I want to do that project. And I know that it's going to get better for me. I'll be able to. Uh, for me, getting that financial stable, stability was very important. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it's going to come now. And then after when it got delayed because of the lockdown and, you know, I had to really work very hard to get to places. Then after, I, it really made me value every opportunity that came my way. I did not underestimate any, even the slightest of it. Um, so when I was at the Miss uh, Universe platform, I said, okay, you know, this is the time. Everything that I went through was for a reason. God showed me this kind of life for a reason. And I'm just going to be me. I have nothing to put on for the world. I'm just going to show who I am, where I come from, the people of my place. They're very humble. They know the importance of, you know, opportunity. They know the importance of being given a chance mm -hmm. and being given a platform. And that's what I delivered that night. Nothing wow. but just oh, My God. Honestly, that is really one thing after another. But like you said, I think this pandemic has really taught us uh, the value of almost everything uh, from the smallest of things. But these beauty pageants, they're, they're quite intense in their training, you know. Um, how was that for you? Like, was it really, really intense for you? I mean, how does it all work? I think it gets very intense because your schedules are really tight and, you know, you're, you're supposed to be a perfectionist. Mm and everything which is really impossible and uh, then you have to face criticism and you need to know how to face those criticisms so it's it's physically very demanding and mentally also you know to a certain extent uh well i've been somebody who has you know i keep uh, a check on my mental space and i get up early just to meditate just to give that time to myself so that has really saved me from the stress because now we also were in a lockdown there were so many things that were not accessible to me and I had to do it on my own and try to learn how to 
figure things out myself. So I feel that this journey has been splendid. It's taught me so many things that I've not even learned in 20 years of my life. I've completed like a crash course in one. <laughs> uh, I'm really grateful. Yeah, exactly. I'm really grateful and has shown me that I, I have that capability. I have the courage to move past this, uh, whatever came my way. Mm. I remember um, at every point there was a disappointment. Um, for example, like, you know, because of the lockdown, we were not able to complete my gown. Mm -hmm. And that's your evening gown that you have. And there were countries that came up with four gowns and three gowns, uh, you know, as a, uh, like a backup. Yeah. But I didn't even have one at the end of it. You know, I, I got one when I was just traveling, when I was just leaving the country, uh, just hours before that. And I, I, that was the first time I walked in it and I was like, oh God, I'm not able to do that. Wow. So uh, at that moment, it, you know, when you prepare for a year when something like this suddenly happens in the end moment and you're not able to justify what happened, uh, you tend to get disappointed. But I, I told myself that, you know, I came, you know, so far not to just come this far. I need to go beyond this. Exactly. So just kept my ears closed and just kept, you know, because you're, you tend to think negative. So I started just yeah. focusing on the goal, what it meant for me, what it meant for my country. I started visualizing and just went forward. I, even on the night of the, like a lot of people ask me, do you regret going so close to the crown and not actually winning it? I remember what Lara Ma'am told me. She told me that, you know, giving it your best is in your hands, but what happens is not in your hands. And I promised myself before I left that no matter what happens, I want to return as, a, I went as a winner and I want to return as a winner. So when I came at the airport, I did not, um, I held the flag high like a winner because you know through it all we were victorious and it doesn't not everybody's going to get a crown in a sash and you don't really need a crown in a sash to do the work that you do mm -hmm. all our role models they don't wear a crown in a sash all the time so i yeah. think for and, me that was important and can i just say you are a winner for us you are our real winner <laughs> oh, thank you excuse me now, what would you say is the most memorable moment of all these years of that intense training, the hardships that you face, the challenges that you've come through? You know, you said you've gone from, you know, thinking negative and being really positive, your meditation. What's that one thing if you could pick out that has been really memorable for you? What would you say it's been? Uh, this is something I cannot explain. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to explain what the feeling is. Um, it's, it's this feeling inside of you, even if, you know, things go wrong, there's something that picks you up and tells you to move ahead. And I, I witnessed it. I don't think I can ever do all of this again because it took a lot from me. Mm. Um, but there was something that was guiding me, that was pushing me every time um, in the most unforeseeable circumstances. So I'm really glad and I'm thankful for that force that really helped me get through this. And all, obviously my parents that are in Kuwait, uh, I didn't, I never got a chance to be with them physically oh. for so long. And I, I really wish I could mm. um, be with them and, you know, kind of share this journey with them. But regardless, they have been a big support system, very understanding to my moods and my, uh, whatever I was going through. Yeah. And really great. And I had a, I had a friend, the one that pushed me so far. Her name is Priyanka Bhatt. And she really helped me with my hand every step of the way, every disappointment. She really gave me that push. No not the end look at the bright side yeah yeah you know? and i feel so like i think i'm blessed to have that support system yeah yeah you need someone like that especially um not not i think just through a beauty pageant but during this pandemic as well you need that one person who is actually going to hold your hand and say you know what it's okay everything will be fine we will get through this um, so that's lovely to know that Priyanka uh, was that person for you. Um, now, what, what are your plans uh, now, now that you're back in India in terms of work? What is it that you would like to do going further? So I've, I've been in the um, entertainment space in terms of being a model and working in, you know, uh, in digital ads and commercials and all that. So I, it's very natural for me to continue in this space and try to make it big. At the same time, because of what this platform is giving to me, like what the kind of confidence that it's instilled in me. So I want to use that to build a business of my own, to get into the agricultural sector. Because it's, it looks like a big plan. It's, it's quite ambitious, but I think I can achieve it now. Looking at whatever I've, you know, the kind of people I've met and what I've learned from them, I'm sure that I can do this on my own. 
Mm. And for, but for right now, I'm focusing on really being connected to my community here mm -hmm. and to be able to reach out to them using this platform in whatever small way possible and just being with them just for these couple of days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been um, a year of really hustling, really kind of getting everything together. I really want this time for myself and to be able to do the things that I love. And I love connecting with people. I love connect, talking to people around and that's what I'm going to do. Oh, that's so, so lovely. And in terms of like, if you were to get any movie offers, would you be interested in, in doing that going forward? Absolutely. Uh, why not? <laughs> I would love to do anything. Characters, I just wish, um, you know, I have that opportunity to portray somebody that who's been kind of like avoided by society like LGBTQ communities in India, you know, their stories and people and wow. uh, societies that have been ignored in us, in our country, whether it's the Northeast or some, all of these, I would love to be involved in these stories, uh, not only on screen, maybe off screen also to do something about it. It's very inspiring. It's very um, motivating for me to do. Well, you are inspiring. You are a huge motivation uh, to so many people out there, yeah. Adeline. Thank you so much. And before I do let you go, um, if you would like to give a message to your fans uh, around the world who are going to be watching this. I'm very grateful um, to you guys for giving me... Uh, am I looking at the screen? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you are. This, this okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful to all of you for giving the kind of love and appreciation that you have given me. Uh, sometimes I do think about whether, uh, you know, um, I've done enough to make you guys proud. But I, one thing is that I know that I have a lot of love for my country and I, I will continue to push and do much more than I can for you guys. And I feel for every girl out there uh, who feels like she's not good enough and feels like a complete loser sometimes. Um, Please don't listen to other people's opinions about you. Trust me, when you start listening to the voice that is inside your life changes. And my life is the testimony for it. Mm -hmm. So every time you feel like you just can't get through it and you don't think, you can't believe in yourself or have confidence in who you are, um, I just encourage you to see mine and how imperfect my journey has been. It's not, it's not been perfect. And I hope that um, a lot of Miss Universes in the future are watching me right now. I want to tell you that you don't need a crown or a sash to do the things that we do. You're very important and so is your work. Don't let people judge you because of your looks, but tell them that your worth comes from your work and the value that you bring to the table. How beautiful. That is so, so lovely. So inspiring, Adeline. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank and you. honestly, we can't wait to have you in London. We really, really can't wait to have you here. So hopefully that's going to be soon. <laughs> I crossed. wish the same. And I hope everything's fine in London in terms of the COVID yes. cases. Yes. Yes, it's much better. Um, it's getting really good touch wood. Yeah. So things are starting to uh, open up, which is really nice here and, and feel some form of normality. Uh, but I pray for India that it gets better really, really soon and it really heals quickly. It will get better. But I mean, I'm, I'm very confident looking at the way the people are really coping up with what's happening. I think it's going to get better soon for sure. Fingers crossed. Adeline, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Take thank care. You. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye.